Hey Channel Insiders, welcome back to Channel Insider Partner POV, your source for untapped opportunities and unfiltered opinions in the IT channel, all to help you make better business decisions. I'm your host, Katie Bavoso. My guest today is Christine Newman, Vice President of Marketing at Shoreline.io, a startup created by an AWS alum that aims to make monitoring and managing cloud operations easier. It's like having an automated digital assistant keeping an eye on your cloud tools and remediating well-known issues so you can focus on running your business. Hi, Christine. Welcome. Hi, Katie. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to meet you. Great to talk about this exciting product that Shoreline has brought to the market. So why don't you tell me a little bit about Shoreline.io? When did you go to market and, and what exactly is your solution? Sure, absolutely. Well, how technical is your audience here? Because Shoreline <laughs> is definitely the most technical company I've ever worked with. So it really depends there, right? And it's, you know, you start looking at solutions like Shoreline and you're kind of going into the very far depths of computers and infrastructures and solutioning and tools that help keep all of these systems running. You know, we work with DevOps teams and SRE teams, the folks that keep the, the production infrastructure up and running, prevent outages, and we enable them with automations in a way that they typically don't use in the production environment. They've got tools like observability that help them find problems in their infrastructure. They've got alerting systems, ticketing systems. They use communication tools like Slack or Teams to talk about the problems they're seeing, right? But when it comes time for them to get their hands dirty, get into the systems and apply fixes, many times a lot of those processes are manual. And it's, um, you know, there's an element of we simply don't trust automation to handle some of the problems in production systems because they're so critical to these companies, right? An outage can cost, and there's you know many recorded types of outages, right? You've got companies like uh, you know Twitter having an outage, and you've got company airlines having outages, right? These can cost millions, if you know, not tens of millions of dollars to these companies um, when they have an outage, and so it's it's a very sensitive type of role. Um, it's Shoreline uh, is, you know, is founded by uh, Anurag Gupta, our CEO and founder. He used to work at AWS. And what he found was that automation wasn't the risk, right? You would build these automations based on repeatable processes, known risks in the system, and then known ways to solve those risks and their problems. He would build up these processes and the automations actually reduce the risk, right? reduced some of the risk of, of humans um, being able to SSH into some of these systems. And those are security risks. There's risks of outages just from um, errors and things like that. So Shoreline does automated incident remediation and resolution. It pairs with observability tools like Datadog. It works with alerting tools like PagerDuty, ServiceNow, and it works with your tech stack that you use for your infrastructure and applies automations to create more efficient resolutions and remediations, for instance. And really it saves DevOps, SRE teams, tons of time. I mean, we've seen, you know, a time to resolve an incident go from seven hours to five minutes, if not less. Wow. It sounds like this is the observability tool of observability tools. <laughs> observability, right, is such a specific thing, right? Observing mm -hmm. incidents is great. You know, you can sit there and observe 10 incidents, 100 incidents, 1,000 incidents. When you start thinking about scaling a system, there's only so many incidents that you can observe. At some point, you have to do something about them, right? Like, who's going to do all of this stuff? <laughs> And these clouds are getting bigger and more complicated and you're running different services and VMs. And how do you now scale when you can hire more people to help resolve some of these incidents? But the fact is, is that, you know, we've got clients that they take 20 people, get them on a phone call. And the first thing they're doing is say, okay, we have an alert, right? The, the disk size is overrun. We've got pods that are growing, right? How do we get on this phone call and now resolve it, right? And everybody gets on a phone and it's 20 people and they're all hands on keyboards. What do we need to look into, right? Mm -hmm. And it's how do you take any type of automation and get them from the point where before they even jump on the phone call, before that alert is even going out to the team to get it far enough along 
maybe to the point where the um, alarm is even resolved, like that incident is resolved, maybe just to the point where you know more about what happened with that alert, where it happened, what other types of incidents were correlated with it. I think that's really important to point out because I wanted to know, you know, what makes this stand out? And in the story of, like you said, your CEO does come from AWS. So he's yeah, probably yeah. seen a ton of things go wrong in his career as far as when he sees the problems that his customers have. Was there a moment in time where Shoreline was born as an idea and there was that moment where he said, this is this can't continue and this is how we're going to address this? It was born while, you know, in his head while he was at AWS, mm. right? And it was based on his ethos of continuous innovation. So the way that Honorog was thinking about it is how do we, you know, how do we apply software to our production operations, right? In a way mm. that hadn't been done previously, in a way that creates um, the type of force multiplier that you need to scale. Right. So he was constantly trying to apply software where he could, where there were typically manual processes. Um, and what he realized was that hyperscalers like AWS, right, can do this. They can take a team of hundreds of people and apply software that way. Other companies can't. They're still at a place where they're hiring to resolve these problems. They're hiring more and more team members to resolve these problems, but the clouds are becoming more complex. They're growing. If you're a company and you're you know, trying to service two or three new clients, those customers are you know, four times bigger than the ones you've serviced before. Now all of a sudden you're in a place where you're trying to grow your team just so you can fix the incidents that you're expecting to happen. Uh, that's a really challenging process to be in and, and getting those developers up to speed um, making them as good as your best DevOps teams, that would be very challenging to do. So you really need to be thinking about how to automate things like this and make sure that your team is focused on either innovation, focused on new product updates, right? Or at least able to keep up with the workload. Absolutely. And you mentioned about scaling. You can't do that with people in this day and age, just considering the shortage of talent that we're seeing in the IT market in general. So completely understand that. Do you happen to know the amount of alerts or the amount of tools that your average customer is trying to run all at once when they come to you? What are they typically saying? Are they like, there's just so much and we don't know how to see it all and take care of it? Uh, you know, it's, I would love to sit here and say it's in the thousands. I'm sure it's more mm -hmm. than that. It's not, there's no typical. And at the end of the day, what we try to do is we try to take the thousands of alerts that anybody's generally looking at with their observability tools and figure out what are the 20% of issues that are happening that are causing the most problems that are taking the most time. So we typically use our AI tools to correlate a bunch of different incidents together, find out where those patterns are, and then map it to um, the, the information that we're getting from alerting systems so we can figure out how much time is spent on particular issues, right? So if it's typically taking, you know, 10 engineers, uh, 10 hours each to resolve, right? Okay, now we have a quantity for how problematic, how much toil these particular incidents are causing, right? And then we can compare that and contrast that to other incidents that are happening in production. By using that methodology, we can start fixing the most problematic problems, right? The ones that will give us the higher return. So that's how we think about it, right? Because, you know, trying to boil the ocean would be awfully challenging. So it's really about identifying those, those next most, um, uh, you know, the, the incidents that cause the, the most oil. And that involves a, a ton of artificial intelligence that's sewn into shoreline.io to make sure that it's following all of this. So could we also talk about the hyperscalers that help to run or power shoreline.io? Who, who are your partnerships um, there? I'm assuming AWS, right? We run on top of AWS services. Um, so we'll go to market together in a partnership and apply solutions for any fast growing company, anybody, you know, uh, either switching over to a cloud infrastructure or changing the way they're thinking about their cloud infrastructure. And we, and we partner with uh, GCP, Azure, right, as well. Um, AWS is certainly the primary though. I hear when people quote unquote, leave AWS, they, they don't, they don't go very far. They're still in the family. So I imagine Honorog's connections there. Are, are really special still. And just how does that separate you from the crowd being able to have that partnership with AWS? What is that like? 
Well, AWS partners with quite a few vendors, mm -hmm. so it's not that special. Honorog does have a bit of uh, celebrity status in the AWS community, and that's because he ran some pretty big products for AWS. So reInvent is one of those places where he gets stopped, you know, every five feet on the street <laughs> and people saying, hey, I worked with you. Oh, hey, how's it going? I heard you over at Shoreline. So that does separate us because of what he was able to achieve uh, within a AWS. In terms of going to market with our channel partners, I, you know, I think it's, it's a busy space right now. Hmm. There's a lack of competition in what Shoreline does specifically. I think about us as a tool that works with the other standard tools that anybody is using to manage their infrastructure. But at the end of the day, we're for the most mature, most fast growing, right? Um, anybody who's evolving their cloud infrastructure, that's where Shoreline's use cases really apply. So the differentiation is a bit different than typically how AWS thinks about the world. And you mentioned about channel partners. I'd like to talk a bit more about that channel overlap with Shoreline.io. Can you tell me if there's an opportunity to work with VARs, MSPs, channel partners like that? Can they get involved with you to be able to close deals with customers or to go to customers and solve problems? And if not, that's also just as much an answer. Absolutely. Uh, I think we are very much in the early stages of evolving our channel partnership strategy. Mm -hmm. And we are absolutely looking for folks to work with in this space. Shoreline is um, is the type of technology that would really work well with a with a channel partner. Um, we'd love we'd love to see more, frankly. Is there a way that you encourage channel partners to reach out and learn more or get in touch with you to be able to say like, hey, what can we do? How can we speed up that process? Yeah, they can reach out to me individually. They can shoot an email to hello at shoreline.io. Uh, visit our website. We're still a relatively small team, so we'll be pretty responsive, I think. And You see the pings. And Christine, I would love to paint a picture of success here. So could you tell me about a customer success story in which Shoreline was able to help solve a problem? Absolutely. So one of my more recent favorites is we work with a company called Razor Pay based out of in India. They're a leading payments aggregator. And they process about $100 billion of transactions annually with 10 million merchants. What the team was trying to do was they were trying to conserve some of their resources, right? Um, they're also trying to eliminate some of the risk to their system. An outage for a payments processor like that would be catastrophic, mm -hmm. right? So they want to implement Shoreline, reduce the amount of risk, reduce the amount of outages, and speed up their team's capability, right? Um, in the industry, it's called MTTR, it's median time to resolve. And what that means is that every incident is measured by the amount of time it takes to resolve it, right? And this can be average seven hours. We went in there and our objective was to try to bring down the amount of time uh, it took to resolve an incident. We were able to move this from, uh, you know, seven hours to five minutes for certain incidents, right? And what it translates to is a 20 to 25% improvement in productivity for every single DevOps person on that team. Wow, that's significant. So what that looks like is that in a typical day, there would be an alert, alert that would happen. Everybody in the team would jump on a call to understand if it was a high priority alert, where did it happen? What happened? Everybody is hands on a keyboard. You've got you know, let's say a team of 10, 10 folks, right? Engineers, you've got SREs, and everybody's looking to see where the problem lies. Shoreline hooked into the alert system and ran a run book that checked all of the different systems, understood, you know, where the incident was happening, what the historical reasons would be, right? And created an entire debugging process such that the time that everybody jumps on the call is now you know, it's still that same amount of time they'd all jump on the call, but now they already know where it happened and what happened. So you've got your full debugging script right there, and you can go about now resolving an incident. And we already know that, you know, resolving an incident, it's actually doesn't take as much amount of time as debugging the incident, right? Debugging the incident, doing that investigation is actually quite hard. Right, because you're looking for a needle in a haystack at times. That's exactly it, yeah. For those that are listening and they're going, 
this might be something I need in my business. How can they kind of identify that checklist of things that are happening within their business to go, yeah, I, I think I need to get in touch with Shoreline? So what we see is, is that uh, many of our customers will be at a place where they're trying to scale their infrastructure, right? They're introducing new uh, CPUs into their infrastructure. They've got new customers that are coming in um, that they're worried about the new complexities that are being added there. Uh, they're moving to the cloud, for example. And we see a lot of that strain put on the on-call team, put on the DevOps teams to resolve some of these issues faster. And what ends up happening is, is that there's, you know, either a couple of teams or a couple of engineers that are trying to kind of make their own homegrown solutions toward automation. And it starts to get a bit fractured on the teams, right? You've got some teams running some types of automation sometimes and in some way, and that, that promise of automation is there, but it can't be rolled out and across the entire DevOps organization. That's where Shoreline really fits in nicely is when the team is ready for automation and they don't quite quite know how to implement it. And like I said, right, we start at the most critical incidents, the ones that are causing the most toil and knock those out and start going down that list, right? So we free up time from that top of the list and, and go through that list next. And talk to me a little bit more about the ability to scale that. I mean, if your customers are growing literally overnight, can Shoreline keep up with that growth? Absolutely. And that's the objective there too, right? So um, in order to keep up with the growth, right, we begin automating tasks. So once you start saving some of that, that SRE time, right, you're saving people seven hours per incident. All of a sudden now you have a massive amount of man hours to apply to other things, right? Because we've resolved some of those more repetitive incidents. We've resolved the common incidents. We've resolved the ones that are happening consistently. We've resolved the ones that are taking up the most time. So the first thing you get is time back. Very important. Time is money. That is something we all have to consider. Time is money. And Shoreline operates across an entire fleet too, which means that, you know, instead of having uh, developers SSHing into every different box, we would be able to apply that automation run across all of those systems at the same time. Um, so there's time saved in that area as well. Let's talk about your job as VP of marketing, Christine. This is a story that it's, I still think it's funny. You In the beginning, you asked me, how technical is your audience? How deep should I go into this? So <laughs> what do you keep in mind when you go to market with Shoreline.io? How, how do you speak to your customers to engage them quickly to make them understand the value? A marketer talking to an engineer doesn't have a ton of clout for obvious reasons, right? There's an entirely different language than an engineer is speaking. There's an entirely different type of activity that um, I don't take place in on a regular basis. Luckily, in my distant past, I did have um, some technical experience um, and I've worked with engineers for most of my career. So I have a bit of reverence for that position. Like that's a really important thing to get across, right? My role as a marketer is to speak to the value, is to speak to the pain, is to speak to the differentiators of Shoreline to help folks orient where the solution fits, right? You know, especially in my background as product marketing too, right? Really think through our positioning and our potential and how we work as part of a larger ecosystem so that when an engineer is now speaking to another engineer and talking about a shoreline implementation, right? That gets super technical. That get, you know, talks about the product, right? Um, and that can be, uh, you know, a secondary conversation, an add-on conversation, but it's always helpful to talk to that sort of 10-year-old version of every person who's like, look, I'm, I'm having a challenge here and I need a solution. And what do you have for me? Christine, my, my last question today would just be, how do we get in touch with you if we'd like to learn more about Shoreline.io? Shoreline.io is our website address. So you can find us there. You can find more information about our products there. Um, and you can find contact details for any of our team. Christine, it's been a pleasure speaking to you and I appreciate your time today. You too, Katie. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. 
Thanks to Christine for joining me today. And thank you for watching or listening. You can check out all episodes of Channel Insider Partner POV on our website, channelinsider.com. Or watch us on YouTube at Channel Insider underscore news and trends. You can also listen to the show in podcast format on your preferred podcast listening platform. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow wherever possible so you never miss an episode. We put out a new video and podcast every week. You can connect with us on LinkedIn or Twitter, or you can email me to be on the show at partnerpov at channelinsider.com. Once again, I'm Katie Bavoso, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.